But if you close your eyes Does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? or z-scores. Another name for z-scores is standardized test statistics. Standardized test statistics or z-scores is given as z equals x minus mu over sigma. And normality, we use a normal curve, which is a special density curve where area is equal to 1. <clears throat> In the middle is the mean, and we have three standard deviations to the right and three standard deviations to the left. Example one, <clears throat> we have adult male heights are approximately normally distributed, oh. which is 68 inches with a standard deviation of three inches. That's mu and that's sigma. What percentile is six feet? <clears throat> well, since our thing is in inches, we need to convert to inches here. So six feet times 12 inches in a foot equals 72 inches. So we draw a normal curve. In the middle is 68, 1, 2, 3, 71, 74, 77, 65, 62, and 59. 72 inches percentile is that number and lower. So we do a z-score, z equals x minus mu over sigma, x is 72, mu is 68, sigma is, oh, sigma is 3. Now we don't have to actually do 72 minus 68 divided by 3 and get the z-score. We go to our calculator, normal CDF, lower bound is negative 99999. Upper bound is 72, mean 68, standard deviation 3. <clears throat> and we get P is 0 0.909, which is 90.9%. So 72 inches. is at the 90.9 percentile. Number two, what proportion of heights is more than six feet, four inches. <clears throat> well, six feet is 72 inches, plus four inches is 76 inches. 
So we draw the normal curve. Sixty-eight is the mean. Three is a standard deviation. Sixty-five. 6259 7174 77 <clears throat> we want 76 so it's a little bit before 77 so what proportion is more than that so that would be this way so we do z equals x minus mu over sigma x is 76 mu is 68, sigma is 3, we do normal CDF, the lower bound is 76, upper bound is 99999, mean 68, standard deviation 3, and we get P is 0 0.0038. So 0 0.0038 of the adult men have a height greater than seventy six inches. <clears throat> okay, not too bad, huh? Number three. Through my notes here. What is the probability that a male is between sixty two and seventy inches? So we draw a normal curve. Sixty-eight in the middle, one, two, three, seventy-one, seventy-four, seventy-seven, sixty-five, sixty-two, fifty-nine. Let's see, sixty-two is right here. And 70 is a little bit right here. 70, 62. So we have z equals x minus mu over sigma. Now we have two x's. So we do large minus small. So z equals x, 70, minus 68, over 3, minus z equals 62, minus 68, over 3. Now we're ready to use our calculator, normal CDF. Lower bound is 62, upper bound is 70, mean 68, standard deviation 3, and we get p is 0.725. There is a 0.725 probability that a male has a height between 62 and 70 inches. <clears throat> Number four. The empirical rule. Or, as they say on the street, 68, 95, 99.7.
So I'm going to draw my curve again. Sixty-eight percent of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So sixty-eight is between sixty-five and seventy-one. Okay. So from here to here. Okay, we'll get rid of that. 95 is within two standard deviations of the mean. So 95 is between, now we got 62 here, and 74. And then finally, 99.7% is between three standard deviations of the mean, which is all this. So 59 to 77 inches. Okay, that's the empirical rule. Helpful in certain situations, not most though. Number five. How many inches are at the 15th percentile? Ah, can't spell. <laughs> What's new? Who needs a spell? How many inches are at the 15th percentile. So 68, 71, 74, 77, 65, 62, 59. Now this is a little bit different because I don't know where, I know where the lower bound is because when they say percentile, and they don't say like top or anything like that. You start at the bottom and you keep on going until you get to the number. But I don't know what number I get to. That's a question mark. So somewhere over here, don't know where, because that's what I'm looking for, I'm going to stop. But I do know that this is 15% of the area. And if the area, the whole thing is a density curve, so the area is one, that area is 0.15. 15% of 1, 0.15. Makes sense. So what do we do? Well, we go back to our z-score. It all comes back to z-score when we talk about normality. We're looking for x. Don't know that. x is unknown. But we do know mu, we do know sigma. So I must know z. z is not 0.2, or 0.15, excuse me. z is how many standard deviations and which direction of the mean. Well, it's got to be to the left of the mean because it's less than 50%. So it's got to be a negative z. So to find z, I do inverse norm. And then it asks you for area, mean, and standard deviation. The area is 0.15. It has to be a number between 0 and 1, otherwise you get error. I'm going to ignore mean and standard deviation for a moment. Okay. I'm just going to find a z. So I hit my calculator, inverse norm, 0.15, I get negative 1.04. Okay. That's my z value. That does nothing but find how many standard deviations, which direction of the mean. Well, that means it's to the left about one standard deviation because it's negative and that's one, a little bit more standard deviation. 
how do we finish this up? I do inverse norm again, and I put 0.15, but now I put the mean of standard deviation. The mean of 68 standard deviation is 3, and I get my x value, which in this situation is 64.9. So 64.9 inches is at the 15th percentile. Okay? Let's see if that makes sense on our graph. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, if we got 70-something, that would not make any sense here. <clears throat> Number six. How many inches are at the top one percentile? Now we said top percentile. So that changes things up a little bit. So top one percentile. is over here somewhere. Don't know where, but it's in towards the top. Don't know where it stops here, or starts, whatever. Now percentiles are that number and lower. So percentiles are always shaded to the left. So this is not at the one percentile, because the one percentile would be here. The top one percentile is technically that number and lower like this. So when it's shaded to the right right here for percentiles, and, and I have to use inverse norm, I'm really looking for in this area over here for the percentile. So I have to do 1 minus 0.01, 1% as a decimal, which is 0.99. So I'm really looking at the 99th percentile. If you're in the top 1 percentile, you're in the 99th percentile. Okay, I mean, you're just as good or better than 99% of the people for whatever you're talking about. So, okay. Z equals x minus mu over sigma. Don't know x. Looking for that. Sigma is 3. Z, I do inverse norm, 0.99, not 0.01. If I did 0.01, I would get a negative 2.33. I want positive 2.33 for my standard deviation, my z-score, excuse me. I do inverse norm again. 0.99683 and I get x is 74.98. Look at your picture. Yeah, that makes sense. Should be over there somewhere. 74.98 inches is at the 99th or top 1 percentile. <clears throat> okay. Doing good so far, hopefully. Now you can always pause and just double check yourself and double check on the calculator, see how things are going on. So know how to use the normal CDF versus the inverse norm. Okay, moving on. Number 7. Where are the quartiles? Well, the quartiles, that's Q1 and Q3. Q2 is easy. Q2 is just the median, which is the mean. So 
so that's 68. So we really don't care about Q2, okay? So let's get rid of that. Da, 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 da. That's the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. Q1, one quarter, 25. Q3, three quarters, 75. So. Oh, ooh. getting kind of crooked. 68, 1, 2, 3, 71, 74, 77, 1, 2, 3, 65, 62, 59, same thing over here, 68, 1, 2, 3, 71, 74, 77, 65, 62, 59, so I'm going to look for Q1, I'm going to look for Q3, 25 percentile, I'm going to shade about 25% of this. So, so over here somewhere. Q3 is 75%, and percentiles is that number and lower. So I have to do at least 50%. That's this right here. And then another 25% over here somewhere. Don't know where exactly. Okay, so don't know where it stops, that's a question mark. Don't know where it stops over here, that's a question mark, but that's 75%. Okay. Now let's go over here. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. Let's do Q1 first. X I don't know, I'm looking for that. For that z, I do inverse norm, 0.25. That gives me my z. And I get negative 0.67. Look at your graph, see if that makes sense. To the left, yep, should be negative. Almost 1. That yeah, looks about right. And I do inverse norm again. Point two five mean sixty eight standard deviation three and I get X is sixty five point nine eight. Look at your graph, see if it makes sense. It should be less than sixty eight, it is. Okay. Now let's do another Z score for Q three. X, don't know. Oop, let's give it a little room here. Don't know X. 68 and 3. For that, I do inverse norm. 0.75. And because of symmetry, I'm going to get the same number as the z-score for the 25th percentile. Well, it's going to be positive, so it's going to be 0.67. Okay? So your z-scores for the... Q1 and Q3 are always 0.67 and negative 0.67. Always. Now I'm going to do inverse norm. 0.75, 68, and 3. And I get X is 70.02. Should be a little bit more than 68 somewhere. Okay, I didn't know where I stopped over there. So around 71, that seems right. So 65.98 is at quartile 1, and 70.02 inches is at quartile 2. So that's how you find your quartiles. Now you can make a box plot. You got your min. As long as, well, we need our min and max, don't we? We don't know what those are. Well, if we had the min and max, we could make a box plot. Some of you are like, oh, stop it. Well, no, we shouldn't stop. We should continue going. Uh, 
Uh, what? I don't even know what number that was. Was that number seven? So we're on number eight. Find standard deviation if the mean of women's heights, the mean of women's heights, uh, I probably, probably should be like women's, I really don't know. Well, it's already plural. Uh, women's heights, whatever. She will make fun of me later. Is 64 inches. And a woman, five feet tall, is in the 20th percentile. So we draw a normal curve. Problem with drawing this normal curve is we don't know where the center is. Oh no, we know where the center is. We know it's 64, right? But we don't know how much our spacing is. Because standard deviation is unknown. But what I do know is this. Five feet tall, well, five feet times 12 inches, 60 inches. Okay, it's getting the same units here. It's in the 20th percentile. So I'm going to shade 20% here, wherever that is. That's 20%. But I, and I know where it stops. It stops at 60 inches. Okay. So if you're stuck, well, go to the z-score. We're trying to find sigma, standard deviation, so we must know everything else. So let's see. X, well, that's 60. Mu, well, that's 64. Sigma, that's what I'm trying to find. So I must know Z. Well, hey, it's a percentile. It's that number and lower, so I do inverse norm. 0.2. And when I do inverse norm of 0.2, I get negative 0.84. Stop and see if that makes sense. That means almost one standard deviation to the left of the mean. Yep, that makes about sense. Now what do I do? Now you can't use your calculator anymore. Now it's an algebra problem. Negative 0.84. 60 minus 64 is negative 4 over sigma. Make that negative 0.84 over 1. Cross multiply. And I get negative 0.84 sigma equals 4 times 1, negative 4 times 1, negative 4. Divide by negative 0.84. So negative 4 divided by negative 0.84, and I get my standard deviation is 4.76 inches. Almost there. One more. Number nine. Find mean. If standard deviation is 6.2 inches and 58 inches is in the 70th percentile. So draw a normal curve. 
Don't know where the center is. Trying to find that. I do know s sigma is 6.2 inches, so the spacing is 6.2 inches. And I know 70 percentile, so I want to shade 70 percent. Well, here's 50 up to the mean. So 70 percent is a little bit past. That number right there, x, is 58. And that's 70 percent. When you're a little bit stuck, go to the z-score formula. Let's see what we know. I know x, that's 58. Don't know mu, I'm trying to find that. Sigma 6.2. The z-score, I must know that somehow. Inverse norm, it's shaded to the left, so I'm okay. 0.7, and when I do inverse norm of 0.7, I get 0.524. Now I'm ready to do an algebra problem. I cross multiply, put that over 1. 0.524 times 6.2 is 3.2488. Equals 58 minus mu. So minus 58 on both sides. And I have negative 54.75 equals negative mu. So mu must be 54.75 inches. See if it makes sense in the context of the problem. Let's see, that's 58 right here. So 54 it has to be a little bit less, and it is. Okay? So that is z-scores in a nutshell. Hopefully you understand this a little bit more. If not, re go back over this a little bit and see if you can figure out some of your weak spots. All right, good luck. So normality, or z-scores, um, or standardized test statistics are very important in determining like percentiles and things to that nature. Remember to use catalog help in your calculator. Normal CDF when you have a lower and upper bound. Inverse norm when you're missing one of those lower upper bounds. If it says like top 10 percentile you will have to use inverse norm and do 1 minus, and you're really looking at the 90th percentile. Good luck on your normality education.